Hello and how are you? I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. And we're going to look at what might be becoming the king of crypto. Is China trying to become the king of currency? We're going to delve into this because this is a really important topic. Let's take a look. So in today's video, we're going to cover, normally I cover three different articles. Today I'm going to cover five articles. All five articles have to do with China and they have to do with cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, blockchain, and uh, currency in general. So let's take a look at it. The first article we'll look at is about the Chinese Communist Party adds crypto to curriculum. Yeah, that's right. The Chinese Communist Party, so this is the government of China, has written their own book and created a class and a teaching curriculum based on cryptocurrency. Wow. I don't know of any other government that has written a curriculum about cryptocurrency. China is drafting laws for the circulation of a national digital currency. China releases an electronic yuan or a, a central bank digital currency and investors are going all in. Top facts on China's crypto, crypto yuan related to blockchain projects. And finally, Chinese government advisors propose regional stablecoin for four Asian countries. Now, this is Chinese, this is like the Chinese government coming out with a their own version of Facebook's Libra. And so you definitely want to watch this video all the way to the end because that's when we're going to cover the Chinese government is building their own Facebook Libra coin and they're starting with four Asian countries. But they've based it off of Facebook's Libra. Wow, unbelievable. Unbelievable. So should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. It really helps us out. It makes a huge difference with the YouTube algorithms. Now, this is the disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. And what we're going to talk about is not financial advice. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So, uh, even though the articles are giving you opinions, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> even though the articles are giving you opinions from other people, I'm going to tell you what I think about the, the, the articles as we go along. And so I will be giving you my opinion in addition to that. Now, in, cryptocurrency involves substantial risk. And so if you decide to invest in cryptocurrency, you definitely want to understand the risk first of all. So read the rest of this paragraph, pause the video and take a good look at it. And also do your own research before investing in anything, whether it's cryptocurrency, a business, a stock, or anything else. Be sure that you're doing what you need to do in order to protect your own interests. So right now, Bitcoin is trading at $9,179. The market is a mix of reds and greens. Some of it's down, some of it's up. In fact, it looks like there's actually more cryptos that are up than cryptos that are down. And Bitcoin itself is not down by a significant amount. It's down by only 1.25%. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I got a tickle in my throat, so excuse me. Now, the Chinese Communist Party adds crypto curriculum. And this is, in my mind, this is significant because... Here, well, let's dig into it and I'll, and I'll explain. It'll, it'll make sense why I think it's significant, I think. A higher education institution that trains Chinese Communist Party officials. So this is a, this is a school that trains government officials. Has published a new book about cryptocurrency. According to a local blockchain news report on May 19th, 
the party school of Central Committee of the Communist Party of China, also known as the Central Party School, published the book as part of a book series on disruptive technologies. Previous entries in the series include a dialogue with party leaders about AI, a dialogue with party leaders about blockchain. The aim of the book series is to provide a source for party officials and the general public for learning about emerging new technologies. Chinese central bank executives, commercial banking executives, and regulators were invited to write the prologue for the new published crypto book. And so the Chinese government is not only getting involved, but they're bringing in heavyweights from the central bank, from commercial banking, and from their regulators are all involved in different portions of this book, including the prologue to the book. Now, the book starts with a history and the origin of fiat currency, so it starts with the origin of a dollar, or the the you know uh, digital for for it starts with the yuan, which would be the Chinese dollar, and then it provides an overview of the current credit currency system and its downside. This leads to a section on the crypto movement and the birth of Bitcoin. The book continues to explore the nature and the future of digital currency and explains in detail what crypto exchanges and ICOs are. It discusses and analyzes regulation issues surrounding these new developments. A whole chapter of the book is delegated to central bank digital currencies. It explains the strategy behind the digital yawn and the impact it would bring to the current payment system. A full comparative analysis of CBDCs, Facebook Libra, and stablecoins is included. So this is interesting. They're really they're they're not only just focusing on cryptocurrency, but they're giving an overview of the origin of money and bringing it all the way into the present and then they're going into the future because Facebook's Libra coin does not exist today. Now there's plenty of stable coins out in the market, um, but there's not very many central bank digital currencies. And so they're framing this in terms of how is the banking system going to react to a new digital currency? And one of the reasons that I've heard a number of people talk about how a digital currency may replace paper dollars all has to do with the current pandemic. And so this, this is very, very interesting. All of these things coming out of China all at the same time. So China is drafting laws for the circulation of a national digital currency. A national digital currency. Amid the coronavirus pandemic, China's central bank has repeatedly, reportedly, sorry, reportedly completed the basic development of the nation's central bank digital currency. The central bank is now drafting legislation for its circulation according to local media. A number of patents have revealed what the digital yuan will be like. A central bank China's central bank, the People's Bank of China, PBOC, is reportedly closer to issuing its own digital currency. Chinese publication Global Times reported on Tuesday, citing an unnamed industry insider. The central bank, in collaboration with private companies, has completed development of the sovereign digital currency's basic function and is now drafting relevant laws to pave the way for its circulation. The public detailed and the insider elaborated as more central banks around the world are cutting interest rates to zero or even entering negative territory to release liquidity into the market amid the pandemic, China should accelerate the launch. China should accelerate the launch of its digital currency. And so the pandemic is a reason for getting China's digital currency to market faster, earlier, sooner. So this is all getting quite interesting. Um, Is China looking to become the world's reserve currency? We we will find out. Uh, It looks like that's the direction that they want to go, and they want the new world currency to be 
a digital currency. So, you know, for years, the United States government and the U.S. dollar has been the reserve currency of the world. And when you go anywhere around the world, things are priced based off of how, they're, how they relate to the U.S. dollar. Are we going to see a time in the future where we do that off of a digital currency from China? We could if things... Anyway, I'm not going to get into the doom and gloom of stuff, but China releases a, a e-yon or a digital currency, uh, cryptocurrency, and investors are going all in with 70% of the nations claiming to be in studying uh, their own digital version of money, China is by far the biggest one to embark on such a journey. China's official state-run news agency quoted President Xi as saying that blockchain serves an important role in the next round of technological innovation and industrial transformation. Now, when you transform not just a business, but you're transforming an industry. You're talking about something, especially when it's an industry in a, in, a, in a global leader such as China or the United States or one of the world's largest global countries that have a global impact. You're not talking about just transforming an industry in China, but it will have an, a, a, a ripple effect to transform the global industry of banking, finance, and currencies. And with China leading the pace, could they end up becoming the king of currencies? The release of the Eon has attracted worldwide attention from investors, hoping the cryptocurrency will reach heights to parallel those achieved by Bitcoin. However, it is yet unclear to what extent China will include the cryptocurrency in its financial system as international skeptics argue that the currency will never be fully decentralized. So China's electronic digital yuan will always be a centralized currency, whereas Bitcoin is a decentralized currency. Said in another way, China will have full control over its currency, whereas with Bitcoin, there is no single entity, there is no single person, or there is no single organization that has control over Bitcoin. Bitcoin is controlled by its community, and especially the miners and those who are the developers making changes to the code that drives Bitcoin. So the Eon may provide a solution for Chinese's long-standing bad debt problem. The country currently has 2.4 trillion yuan or 341 billion US dollars of officially recognized bad debt due to the illegal yet popular practice of obtaining multiple loans pledging the same collateral. So that's like taking out five different loans for the value of your house um, and all of them are for the full value of your house. In other words, if your house was worth $100,000, and I'm only picking that number because it's an easy number to multiply, but you take out $500,000 in loans, you took out uh, $100,000 loans from five different banks pledging your house as collateral, that's a bad thing because if you default on those loans, if you choose not to pay them, the people who loaned you the money at best, are going to have to fight over the money they can make from selling your house. And so they're going to get only a small portion of the loan they originally gave you. Using smart contracts provided by the Eon currency, the government of China will be able to track assets and liabilities and to ensure that multiple loans are not taken over the same collateral, says senior blockchain researcher Jay Rothers. The circulation of the currency will be controlled by the state and only authorized brokers and banks will be able to sell the cryptocurrency initially. So that's an important point to keep in mind. We're talking about a state or government controlled digital currency. So next in the news, top facts on China's crypto yawn and related blockchain projects. 
as China stops the, pro, uh, the spread of the pandemic inside the country, the government announced two of the largest crypto and blockchain related developments. The road to adoption is often long and arduous one, and China seems to be the country making the biggest strides in the development and integration of blockchain-based technology on its home turf. In April, after several years of work, the Chinese government announced the completion of two milestone initiatives involving blockchain and cryptographic technology. The first initiative pertains to the country's central bank digital currency, uh, named DCEP, which is reportedly being tested in four local cities. The second development is related to Blockchain-Based Service Network, or BSN, which is currently said to fully be, be fully operational. Meanwhile, China is also launching a grandiose plan dubbed the Chinese Standard of 2035, which outlines how the next generation of technology will be operated including everything from telecommunications to artificial intelligence. And so China is taking an aggressive stance to being the, the, not only a technology leader, but a leader in terms of, of technology in cryptocurrency and a, 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 a digital currencies. So quite interesting. Finally, the Chinese government advisors propose regional stablecoin for four Asian countries. Top Chinese political advisors have proposed a regional digital currency that would be backed by four major Asian currencies, including the Japanese yen, the Korean won, the Hong Kong dollar, and the China yuan. The proposal, unveiled Thursday, describes the currencies as a stable coin, a term for cryptocurrencies designed to hold their value and backed by a reserve currency, although it does not explicitly mention crypto or blockchains. The People's Bank of China, PBOC, would lead the proposed effort. The basket of underlining collateral would follow the special drawing rights uh, model of the International Monetary Fund, where each country's currency is assigned a different weight based on the country's economy. As the proposal resembles the original version of Facebook's Libra, before that, Facebook spawned a project, watered down its plans, and pivoted to developing digital versions of individual fiat currencies. The Libra Association recently welcomed Singapore investment company to Masic as its first state-owned entity member. The proposed stablecoin would help facilitate trade among four, the four countries, which is key to economic recovery in the region after the pandemic. Its proponents said it would do so by improving cross-border settlements and clearing services with a new payment network and digital wallet for enterprises. So, with China the Chinese government leading the way with four Asian countries, Japan, Korea, and Hong Kong, all combining to create a single digital currency that represents the currencies from all four countries. What does this mean for the rest of the world? When, Re when Facebook Libra came out and announced that they were going to take a basket full of of currencies from a whole variety of countries, regulators blew a gasket and called the, the, um, you know, the president of Facebook into all kinds of government meetings to drill him on what does this mean? How is it going to be used? What's Facebook going to do to protect the public? But really, those government entities were more interested in how is Facebook going to protect this government, the government that they happened to be talking to at the time, because Facebook ended up having to talk to governments all over the world about their plans for Facebook's Libra. Well, you know, when it comes to the Chinese government, there's no way that they're going to kowtow or bow down to other governments when it comes to them developing a central currency or digital currency that involves other countries. Um, and so 
the the question I started out with is China trying to become the king of currencies. Based on these articles, there's a strong possibility that that's their motivation. Um, and I don't know why they, I mean, we know that China wants to rule the world, but they've just been taking a very, very slow and long looking approach. They're, they're, they're planning on things decades down the road, not just trying to do something quick and short term. And so is, is all of this part of a plan that China had been developing for years? Only time will tell. So anyway, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions, thoughts, comments? Do you disagree on the questions or the opinions that I'm raising? Look, you know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. But it, when we share what we know with each other, we'll both grow smarter. I want to grow smarter with you. So please share your, dis your polite disagreements in the comments on the YouTube channel. And in the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor and have a fantastic day.